Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We're going to be covering Bakshi. Yes, the big boy himself. Wolf Hermit is his title for the World of Berg. One of the best cavalry units in the game. So let's go into the full hero guide for Bakshi today. Since this hero doesn't have a cool intro yet. So we need to wait for that entrance video to come. But let's see what Bakshi is all about. And is he worth investing into? Smash a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, guys, for more daily Call of Dragons content with me, Mr. Sneaky, giving you all that goodness and in-depth, guys, to try and give you an edge and hopefully some in-depth understanding that you can hopefully understand when we go through these, right? So today we've got Bakshi on the table. He's one of the final legendary heroes we need to cover on the channel. We've got Bakshi, we've got Indus, and we've got Fear are the last three in the season one to go, and then we will be finishing off with the Syndrome at the end, right? So, hope you guys are looking forward to it. So, Bakshi, is he any worth it? And I'm not gonna lie, guys, I think he is. He's one of the coolest heroes in the game. I'm not gonna lie, he looks cool, his abilities are cool, he's very goddamn strong, and throughout your playstyle, especially if you're gonna be a T4 player or a T5 player, Bakshi is going to be used everywhere and you can see even mines at 5222 it's nowhere near insanely skilled but I use him all the time and he is so good in PvP as well as PvE and the reason is is when we go to his skills he has a 1400 skill damage factor to the target and he gains 20% extra health to his legion which is absurd for cavalry right you're doing a big nuke instantly with that unyielding rush which you gain from that 1k rage generation and then you're gonna be able to gain 28% HP from it right so I love this five seconds instantly at the start of combat keeps you very tanky throughout the fight which is a really good thing about Bakshi his second skill is nothing too crazy it's just a peacekeeping skill a lot of characters have this like Nika as well so we're not going to go too mental over it, you know, it does help you out if you want, but in primary wise, we're going to try and keep this at one, so we don't need to have any skills into it. But our third skill is another 10% cavalry HP bonus. So this is really good. We get 10% HP and 20% physical attack here for cavalry. And this is a really good stat line, 30% worth of stats. 10% HP, meaning we gain another technically 20% on total in a window, right? It is always in a window for five seconds, but in total, the march is gaining over 30% in a battle, and that's going to be cycling through with his talent trees, which we'll be going over later, right? So really, really good passive buffs that you're going to have on your cavalry. Everyone's going to love this, and again, two of the best stats that you're going to want in PvP, so you're definitely going to want this on any of your cavalry. But a cool thing which makes Bakshi um, a little bit of a gambler, let's say, because he's got that staff, you know, looking a bit spooky booky like. But when he's in battle, he gains a random buff. So whenever he's fighting, he has a chance that every 10 seconds, he's going to gain a buff. And this buff will last for 5 seconds in that time. So he can either gain another 30% worth of attack and defense. 30% rage accumulation speed, or he can heal 200 troops every second, basically, um, for ten, for the five seconds, right? So it gets a nice 1k heal off, basically, if you've got this up. Really good. Um, all of these are really good, honestly. You, you get in a rally, you'll notice when in a rally, you get all of these benefits, and they all have their uses, because when you get that rage accumulation speed, especially if you hit it in the early fights, you're gonna get doing a load more damage, and then when you hit that mid game, and you need to sustain, and he starts randomly hitting that healing factor, you, you honestly love to see it, so really cool skill, I really do like his skill for in the game, but when you do, finally, if you're a big boy, and you get all of your gold keys or you've been spending and you awaken him it upgrades his main skill and it upgrades it to give you an extra 100 damage which is nothing too crazy but the thing when you do get which is very impactful for a t5 player 
is that 30% HP, right? You get so many more stats that you're gonna be able to have on the battlefield compared to your opponents. So it's gonna give you the edge, and that's why I would, honestly, if you are a whale, you should most likely have this hero, right? And you should have this hero most likely awakened by now, because he is, in my eyes, the best cavalry hero so far. I'm not gonna lie, I think he's better than Emery's. Emery's is really good. Obviously, when we go into the pairings, which we will go over, this is the best pairing. But I prefer Bakshi because he is more versatile. He's more got more healing, he's more tankier. He can sustain on the battlefield a lot longer. And he's, because of his skill tree too, he has makes him such a good hero in the primary slot. And I'm not gonna discredit Emery's. Emery's, you know I love the boy and he's so cool as well. But out of the two heroes, I always would recommend Bakshi as that primary hero. And when we're going into those pairings, the reason why, again, you're gonna have access to the skill tree with Bakshi. And if you run Bakshi primary with that Emery's behind, even at 5-1-1-1, like mine basically is here, you have such a strong march because you're able to have a lot of the skill regeneration from the talent tree and then have the rage accumulation speed passive on your Emery's, right? And when you have both of these heroes awakened, and that's only, again, Tay 5 territory or late game, right? If you're a late game player and you've been playing this game for a long time and you're checking out the video and you've got an Emery's expertise, he is insane with your Bakshi still, right? And the reason why is this: these two do the most damage. They, they tank the most, they're able to dish out the most damage due to the Spring Blade passive here from Emery's and it's a terrifying combo to have. But you can do some other interesting stuff, right? So we have Bakshi's, if you're a spender too, you can rock um, your Hosk behind him, that's gonna give him more damage. Or if you wanna choose Hosk Primary, that's fine and get that skill off, you can do that. And it'll give him a bit of a defense, it's up to you. Um, again, fear primary, secondary, either one works. It depends on what you want your march primarily to do. Do you want it to tank more? A lot of players would suggest in this scenario, if you're going to use fear, use fear as the primary so you do get that shield so that it protects your units. So when you get the buff onto that Bakshi, he is hitting them at biggest, you know, at the highest, at his peak, you know, because he's got the most units shielded and not taking damage. So when it cycles through it's gonna pop him right so you can do that if you want um but the obvious choice is Al Al alistair right alistair is a great hero to pair as again with bakshi he when you have an awakened one and you have chivalric oath unlocked at level 40 the fact that you take less damage by 10 percent this is overall less damage is nuts and you get a nice a little bit of normal type damage you're not too crazy about but you get rage accumulation speed, you know, when, when you are fighting, you get more counter attack damage bonus. You also gain a nice amount of HP and attack bonus. And the cool thing is you don't deal as much damage as you can imagine as your Emery's, but you're close to it. You're doing 1200 damage because this is the target. Oh, it technically more, it's 1800 damage, right? Because this is AOE and it's the only AOE the game has for cavalry right now. That's, you know, a non-cavalry based unit. So really good, again, if you don't have an Emery's but you've got a really good Alistair, you could rock that Bakshi primary and then have the Alistair behind it and it would work beautifully together, right? So those are the pairings. They're not too much to go with, but just remember if you're looking at this video and thinking about cavalry pairings, we've got more heroes to come. And supposedly in patch 1.018 or maybe 19, basically the next coming patches, there should be some cavalry heroes coming. So if you're looking to invest into a hero, maybe wait and you can get your back sheet up as a 5-1-1-1 hero and then, you know, hold off because some more heroes are coming. So you can pair them up with that back sheet and make a really solid new pairing that we don't know about, right? So what we are going to do is go into the artifacts. The artifacts are really simple and I'm not going to lie, guys. The best in slot in this match, I think, always is gonna be Spring Blades now. Spring Blades is just an absurd weapon. The more you use it, the more you level this thing up and get it randomly, the better it's gonna be for you because obviously you're gonna increase the skill damage for this. 
But the amount of damage this thing pumps out, and you can use this in your PvE stuff like Dragon Trials or the Celestial Battlefield, you can use this in PvP, and the fact that you can fling this out before combat really goes, you know, or you start combat, get this up, fling it at someone else, run away, it's going to deal a ton of damage and return. It's so good in the game, honestly. It's probably my favourite artifact to run on these calves, but... There is some other really good ones still. I would call it the Holy Trinity now. There's a new Holy Trinity in my eyes, which is Spring Blades for the most AoE damage. You're going to run Storm, Arrow, Storm uh, Arrows for the Blink because it is the most insane thing to have that increased damage dealt onto someone and then you get Unyielding Rush. Then if you also have it, you can use Kingslayer because Kingslayer is a, an absurd amount of AoE damage this deals. And if you're really, really good timing, you can potentially get that 10% execute on the targets and get some really quick free kills. And when that does pop off, that animation, it looks lit, right? Uh, finally, if you don't have Storm Arrows and you do have Wolf Woman of Halo, this is still a fine choice, right? They're the ones that I would honestly pick if you're going to pick any of them. If you're going to try Solan's Blade, you can use that as a fine alternative. But as soon as you get Spring Blades or that Kingslayer, I would definitely be using one of those. Those things do so much damage in the PvP scenario. And this thing is so fun to use, honestly. So definitely on Bakshi, rock one of them. If you're going to be using Bakshi as a Rally, you can imagine, guys, you know, without without question, just 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 just, just use it. Just use it, guys. Just use it. It's, it's, it's simple, right? You have to use the Bloodbait Banner if you're going to run it. So, not going to go too crazy in that one. So, that's it. That is all of Bakshi's pairings, is skills and artifacts. So, we've got through all of the, the nitty gritty. So, let's go into the talent pages, right? Everyone loves the talent pages. It's going to be the longest parts, the in depth part that like we're going to talk about. We're going to give you two skill trees to work from the cavalry and the skill tree. And then hopefully, you know, you can pick one or the other. Both really good trees in their own right. Um, but we'll tell you the one that I use the most um, when we get to it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. Smash like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more hero guides, behemoth guides, anything Call of Dragons that is event related, PvP. We've got it on here and we're trying to make it a hub for you guys so you can all come and enjoy the content and also obviously pitching your ideas. If you want certain content, I'm always there listening to your comments. So let's go into the talent section. So here we are, we're at the talent pages and we've got the best one on show in my eyes First, and this is the skill based talent tree. This thing does absurd damage for you. You can change and tweak it still, but this is the best way I believe you should be rocking it again for PvP because it does insane amounts of damage for you. Um, we're going to go through all your 50 points, and then once you get to level 60, what you, this is showcasing your level 60 page what you're going to be able to do. And again, if you want to try and test some talent pages out, guys, the way I'm able to do this is through the Battle Sync. So you can check the Battle Sync out on your Roots of War page. And you'll be able to test and build some pages on here without going too crazy, right? So with this, we've got the skill tree. And the skill tree for me is pretty simple. We're going to go down the attack, the skill damage and the rage generation. Why? Sit simple. We want as much cavalry attack as possible to empower that skill one damage, as well as obviously the skill damage percentage to make that little bit more. And the little bit more that adds up over time is what makes these guys hit like a truck, right? So we're all about trying to get in and out of combat as fast as possible and deal a bunch of damage. So having as much as we can is our primary focus. We're gonna go high spirit, having our rage generation. And the reason why we do go high spirit and spirits of rage, even though some of you might be like, hey, why are we playing calves? The reason is, is because we are playing calves, you're right. And the fact that you're playing a cavalry unit, you're able to now run down a marksman or a mage unit hit them with that unyielding rush, get 1,000 rage instantly, hit them like a truck for over 3k plus damage as a base, right, from your skill on your heroes, you're immediately now going to get another 20 rage and you're going to start generating rage 
to then beat them to the second one, right? So you always want to try and get ahead and stay ahead. That is the way to go with cavalry. You want to hit hard, hit fast, and get out. So that is why we keep the regeneration here. Really good bit of kit for Bakshay, and it allows him, uh, again, if you're using him as a primary commander and you don't have Emery's, you're going to need this little bit of regeneration here for your march to pair him with Alistair and other heroes that you're going to be using. In PvP, I would always recommend Unquenchable Will. This ignores um, your HP of the enemy, meaning you'll be punching harder, meaning those legions that have got all the little tech are basically getting weaker. And the weaker the units are, again, the better. We're going to kill them quicker. If you don't like Unquenchable Will, you can take a more all-out approach where you reduce 0.8% of your uh, normal attack damage but you do gain an absurd 1.6% per rank on this skill damage. So it'll be 1.6, then 3.2, 4.8, 5 point something, and my brain's gone. Um, 16.32, you're going to get a, a bunch anyway. It goes up to about 5%, I think, or 6.4%. So you're going to get a ton of hero skill damage if you want to, but I would recommend, honestly, for PvP, you're going to want the enemy HP ignore. You want to basically punch through your opponents because they've got already the stats. You've got to think, everyone's already got the stats and they might be matching you on stats. So if everyone's matching each other on stats, you're going to be hitting each other pretty much the same. So the thing that's changing this is you being able to mitigate and go through certain barriers, you know, and hit harder. So that's why... On, honestly, Unquenchable Will, really good talent to run for your march. And as you can imagine, we're trying to kill them as fast as possible. So, because we're doing it, we're going skill crit. 10% skill crit, and then 15% skill crit damage. It might not sound a lot, guys, but having that 1 in 10 chance of gaining the focus to then blow these guys up with that 10% uh, crit chance is obscene. You won't understand unless you've played other games like Rise of Kingdoms or potentially a better scenario is like if you've played League of Legends or Dota, World of Warcraft. A lot of those games used to play some crazy stuff. They used to play runes that gave 1% crit chance as a um, damage um, ability for like an AD carry for their normal attacks. If you could get a 1% chance to crit on your magic attacks, you would have done the exact same thing because the fact that this one crit could occur during a battle will change the tides of battle very quickly. And it's a really good thing that it does that. So we will take that in this because we're going to take advantage of all the regeneration and skill damage we're doing. So that's why we go in for the skill crit. And then we go for first the blood, so whenever we do cast that rage skill, we do additional hero skill damage. Pretty simple, right? So we can burst through those. And that's going to be basically 43 points. So when you're level 43, this should be what your skill tree looks like, right? And then you're going to be on your last 7 points. And your last 7 points will be 5 points into cavalry speed and 2 points into the attack. But then you will then be pushing to level 60. And level 60 is through your PvP. And this is when you're going to push to enhance the amount of damage you can be dealing, right? You can be using um, a cavalry attack and then finishing off again on more high spirits to generate even more rage to keep cycling through, like we said, on that. Because we want as much HP bonus, as much damage as we can to punch through and kill the opponents as fast as we can and rage does that right so really really good to do and then because we are generating so much rage we are going perfect ferocity so whoever is in the back if it's an emery's if it's a alistair for example they're going to be dealing an extra bit of damage so i love the fact that we get this 10 seconds worth of hero skill damage increase and um, when we enter the battle so it is so good you enter bang both heroes, primary, secondary, 15% extra hero skill damage hit. Then you got all the rage generation from high spirits, high spirits, and spirit of rage. Because these do stack, if you're wondering, at the moment. In the game, everything does stack. Um, there's not been any confirmation yet on limitations. But from all the things we've known, stuff stacks. So you can rock both. And that's why we're rocking both. 
And then what we do, because we are cavalry, we're going to take the last points. It's the best point to put in. 1% extra more damage to marksman is better than having only 0.3% um, reduced defense for a 0.6 increase or that 0.8 counterattack damage less. There's just no point. Having 1% more damage is way better. It's going to benefit you more in the long run when you're trying to pump hard with those big skill damage moves. So we've got the other tree now. So this is the best tree in my eyes you can run. But if you don't want to go for big, big damage and you kind of want to go a bit more like an off tank build we've got another one and we're gonna run it through with you so it's in the cavalry tree right so we're gonna go down the cavalry speed and we're gonna go and hit the march speed obviously and in this build we are gonna take egoism because we're gonna try and make our cavalry units generate a bunch of rage still and do a bunch of damage but our back sheet wants to be a bit more tanky. We're gonna try and make him so he's able to sustain a little bit longer. And this can be better in fights that you might be going into where you are outnumbered. If you're outnumbered and you need to sustain or this is gonna be the better um, talent tree to run compared to a skill one because the skill tree is more made for if you've got a nice imagine you know 50 players versus 50 players everyone's got the same amount of marches out and you're murder balling and you're concentrating you know together but if you're outnumbered this is the tree you're going to be wanting to run so here we're going to go swift analysis here taking less counter-attack damage again so we don't have to worry about any of that goodness we could go for Gorilla, so, and I really do like Gorilla. It's a really good march or quick escape. So whenever you fight and you kill your opponent and you're trying to get out, if you're not running the blink effect, this is a really good effect to run. And also, you could also run Trample because this gains Keen after defeating an enemy. So if you've run in and quickly killed someone and got all your artifact damage and you're going to switch targets now, well, you might have a 5% increase of attack when you switch targets and deal a bit more damage. And you can combo with Entangle. And this is the cool thing by doing this little route here that I am suggesting that you can do at the end on this little bit of um, talents for the cavalry tree. Because when you go for Entangled, you're basically going to slow down the enemy. So if you slow down the refresh timers on your enemy, it means you gain control of the battlefield and you'll be doing some honestly solid work for your alliance members if you're able to do this with maybe a group of different cavalry players and delaying all the marksmen or mage players from returning, you know. Adding this up, this is goes all the way up to 20%, guys. This is a lot of time. Four, you know, eight, 12, 16, 20%. It's a lot of time that this is going to go up. So it is a really underestimated thing, um, a talent to go by if you're going down the cover tree. But I would recommend if you want to do this, you can go down Trample and Entangle. But we're going to stick to what my initial tree is and we're going to actually go down Gorilla, right? And the reason why we go down Gorilla is we're always marching. We're always marching. We're marching towards a, 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 you know, a marksman or a mage unit. We're marching away from them if they target us too soon. You know, we're doing in and out. We're always marching, so taking 2.5% less damage all the time, and that is from normal hits, counter attack hits, as well as your um, skill damage. Brain fart there. Um, it is going to be such an important skill or talent to actually have on cover it's going to keep you sustained way more in the battlefield and all about sustained is triumphant return and this is why i like this build because now we go down blood mark and when we get blood mark we start to deal 150 extra damage when we cast our rage skill and start killing those guys and we basically are still going down the similar route, but we don't have as much rage generation as we had in the last build. But we're more tankier because we're able to sustain more damage. And when we kill, we gain more troops back, right? And this little bit of healing is nice with the skill 4, right? You're going to be healing over time with skill 4. If you kill someone, you get that little bit extra before going into combat again, which will add up and it will give you that extra worth of 10 stamina that you're going to be using for this march, right? So from here, we will go into overall attack and we're going to go and grab overall health this time. And then we're going to gain high spirit still because we still need some more regeneration because we are lacking it. But 
we will go boiling blood. This is where this build is a little bit different to the other one, as you can imagine. And we will be taking detached here. Because detached is a really good one for this build. Because it gives us one point left, as you can imagine. And for one point, we get 1.6% more skill damage. Compared to only 0.6 extra defense for two seconds, which is just not noticeable. Or only 0.4% mitigation. That's not enough mitigation for us. We need at least 1% or more to make this worthwhile. So having that nearly 2% extra skill damage is really good for one point. And with this build now, hopefully it might enlighten you on what it's trying to do, right? You're trying to be tanky. You're going in and you are trying to hit as hard as possible. As long as possible, right? So you're going to go in. Get 1k rage, unyielding rush. You're going to hit as hard as you can with the perfect ferocity bonus. And then the boiling blood bonus now. Because whenever you cast your rage skill, the deputy in the back's hitting even harder. And then, once both of these hit together, you're going to be triggering blood mark. Which is also dealing even more skill damage. So you can see here, it's a really good build. Honestly, it's underappreciated. It's a little bit more of an off-tank build compared to a big blast cannon. But honestly, I would recommend using this. And you got to remember, guys. You can make both of these builds, which I'm done right here. On Roots of War, on the Battle Sync, and you can test them out in the Roots of War and see if you've been enjoying it, right? Because all of your heroes will be level 60, so you can test these talent pages out. So, I hope you've enjoyed today's video on Backshit. We've gone over his talent pages, we've gone over his hero pairings, his artifacts, and finally, those amazing skills, and hopefully you can tell... He is worth getting. You can definitely get him. And if you want to try and get him sooner through the daily deals, if you're a spender, I, I would recommend doing that if you want to do that as a cavalry player. Um, but you will be obtaining your Bakshis through the Golden Keys. So you're going to gain him really easily through Golden Keys. He's going to be expertise for every player if you play the game long enough and get all the gold keys to get there, right? So, I've got hiccups, so I do apologise at the end of the video. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Smash that like, comment and subscribe for that in-depth analysis on the talent pages for Mr. Bakshi and the guide for him. This is now the big one that will be in the playlist. So if you want to check out the playlist, you can. It has everyone in it so far without the last three, which we mentioned in the beginning of the video. So with all that said, smash that comment, smash the like button, smash the subscribe, and tell me what you thought about the video. If you want it a little bit shorter, we can try and make it a bit shorter, but obviously I know you guys love that in-depth analysis on the talent pages, which I always provide for you. So with all that said, stay safe, stay sneaky. Peace out all.